This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com. You're listening to the Pretend You're Fired Today podcast. And now, here's your host, Lisa Rangel. Welcome. Hello. Welcome to the fifth episode of the Pretend You're Fired Today podcast. I'm Lisa Rangel, host of the Pretend You're Fired Today podcast and the founder of Chameleon Resumes. We are an executive resume writing and job search consultancy firm that helps executives and rising leaders land their next position faster. I'm excited to be here with you today. We're going to show you how to continually impress decision makers in your network and help you stay marketable to your network, which is the only way to have job security in today's economy and to proactively take care of yourself and your career. In past episodes, we talked about the only way to truly protect yourself from job loss is to pretend you're fired today. Imagine that happening and then make a list of the activities you would do to start to find your next job. Always having this list in the works, having your resume ready, your profile ready, your network primed. This is the best path to always be working and not have gaps in between employment. As we said in episode one, the first thing on that list is dusting off that resume and getting it up to speed. The last three episodes, we looked at how to format your document according to today's trends and how to find the right keywords to put into your resume so you catch the attention of decision makers in your network, hiring managers, and recruiters. Today, we're going to show you how to write an achievement-driven information technology leadership resume so you can outshine your competition and always be the candidate that gets the interview for these roles. You're not an IT person, don't worry. You can jump to the next couple of episodes when we look at healthcare, finance, and marketing resumes, although you will find that these points in today's episode still apply to non-IT resumes. Whether it's an exploratory interview or an interview for a job opening, writing an achievement-based resume in IT as well as in other professions will always pique the interest of your network and of hiring managers that want top talent. Top talent is always being searched for. So let's get to this. Most high-performing CIOs and IT leaders, they haven't kept up their resumes because, you know, well, they're too busy being high-performing and they're doing their job. As a result, their current resumes They often still reflect the years, their early years, where they were tactical practitioners of their craft and not the leaders of their craft. And they often don't have their track record, especially as a senior leader, documented. So as a CIO or a rising information technology executive or a senior manager, properly crafting an interview generating resume is still one of those most important steps for communicating your skills, promoting your achievements, confirming your abilities to work with both technical and non-technical leadership and staff, and ultimately demonstrating how you're the best candidate for a coveted leadership role. The key difference in creating an effective IT leadership resume versus a staff-level IT resume is the integration of human capital management skills and fiscal acumen with your technical qualifications throughout the document. I'm going to walk you through six ways to do this here in our episode today. And for more examples on the topic, go to ResumeCheatSheet.com and you'll see expanded instructions and actual real world examples demonstrating these points for leadership resumes. Bottom line is this, as an IT executive, you need to demonstrate how you've utilized human and technological resources to improve corporate profitability, period. And here are six ways to achieve this goal. The first point is to create an IT document, an IT leadership resume that shifts from a tactical implementation standpoint and shift it to outlining strategic results. Showcase corporate contributions to top line, expense line items, workflow, productivity, and the bottom line. You want to graduate from citing specific tactical skills and tasks and areas of responsibility, and these are common points to touch on on staff level information technology resumes, and you want to shift it to outlining initiatives where your decisions have added value, have contributed to the top or bottom line, and projects. You want to go outline projects that you've led, the amount of people you've managed, and what results those team-driven efforts resulted in. The key with a CIO resume, as with all leadership resumes, is you want to include the long-range effects of your work 
in addition to the short-term results. You want to show how you can strategize on the big picture and cause movement with what is directly in front of you. Next, you want to emphasize your soft skills. You don't want to lose readers in a list of systems and software and hardware and applications and technical stuff in which you have your expertise. As a leader, your CIO executive resume or rising leader IT resume will be read by both technical and non-technical types. So you must cater to both audiences. You want to come across that you can work with IT-minded people as well as non-IT-minded people. Highlight your soft skills and how they enabled you to manage both technology and people resources to drive workflow productivity, revenues, and additional profits for the businesses that you've been in. Third, you want to show that you can attract high quality talent and lead teams. Companies hire leaders so they can attract the talent that wants to work with them. Effective IT executives not only manage technology, but they manage the people who manage the technology that bring results. So you want to make sure that you can show that you can negotiate deals, attract talent, influence key decision makers, and nurture vendor relationships. Highlight your skills in team building and communication and influence and do it in a results-driven manner. Show how these soft skills have contributed to your success. Fourth, you want to choose the appropriate context when communicating to prospective employers for leadership roles. So what do I mean by this? You know, leading with your biggest achievement in your career, in your 20, 25-year career, may not always be the best way to start this document or the, the interview process even for that matter. If showing your biggest achievement to the employer doesn't relate to that employer, you're going to lose them. You want to reframe your accomplishments to showcase what is important to the next role and have that right context. That's always preferred. You want to make sure that you're showing that you can meet the needs of that prospective company and not just going in with your biggest achievement bravado. So for instance, if you saved $20 million in one initiative as like say a middle manager at a billion dollar employer, but now you're applying to an executive leadership role with a $200 million company, you may not be perceived in alignment with the prospective company because you're leading with this big company accomplishment and they're a mid-sized small company. So you want to reframe your achievements to make sure that it's going to be relevant to who you're targeting. That's key. Choose achievements that are within the fiscal scope of the prospective company or consider using percentages with dollars to outline your accomplishments. You always want to be right-sized with what's relevant to what the company that you're targeting needs. Fifth, you want to highlight achievements using universal language and downplay the technical jargon. Outline your technical and human capital achievements in common everyday language to the best of your ability. Don't just lead and overpopulate your document with technical jargon. You want to appeal to the many types of audiences to whom your resume will be read. You may be most comfortable speaking in acronyms or technical vernacular, but not all CEOs or executive hiring team members, if they're in marketing or finance, they may not be aware of the tech speak that you're so great at. This is a subliminal way of coming across that you can work with anybody in a company. So I suggest that you speak about technology in approachable terms, in achievement-based terms, so people see the reason why they should follow your lead or take your suggestion because of what benefits it will bring them, as opposed to just showing off your knowledge of everything that you know. You want to make sure you're understood by many types of executive level management individuals at the table. This will demonstrate, it's a very subtle but powerful way to demonstrate your ability to work with non-technical stakeholders. It's paramount. Lastly, you want to be what they want, but never lose yourself in your resume or in any other part of the hiring process or networking process. So the content in your resume and your social media profiles and just your general communication should be congruent with your personality, your beliefs, your work style, but still meet the needs of the prospective employer. You need to be able to meet the needs of the prospective employer for this relationship to work. In addition to what you need, you got to honor both parts. It's not always about you and it shouldn't be always about them. Ensure your documents, your resume in particular, will be in line with the person who shows up for that interview, right? That being you. You want to be who you are on paper, online, and in person. The resume of a successful CIO chief information officer must not only demonstrate that you know 
the how and why behind the technology, but it also must tell a story on how you've communicated effectively with, with managers, lenders, shareholders, vendors, staff, and other key partners. You've heard me say this a few times because it's important. The best technical leaders will show how they identify and understand the implementation of current technology that breeds financial benefits improves the company's position with the marketplace, and just simply makes their staff happier. So you're going to see an example of this at ResumeCheatSheet.com. So you'll want to make sure that you take a look at that. Bravo to you for writing this resume before you need it. It's so key. And if you're currently not working, don't worry. You know now what to do, and you can make your resume stronger starting today. So let's take action on today's episode. I want you to download our Resume Cheat Sheet at ResumeCheatSheet.com. And you can start comparing your resume to the sample that I have on that cheat sheet for you to use. You can also attend the training that goes along with that cheat sheet for more examples. I want you to look at your resume compared to the resume cheat sheet sample. What do you have that's similar? What do you notice that's missing? I encourage you to attend the training that I offer once you download the cheat sheet. For This way you can get some more information on how to make sure those gaps between your resume and our resumes are smaller, if non-existent. If you're in marketing or finance or another discipline or industry, don't fret. Download our resume cheat sheet again at resumecheatsheet.com if you haven't already and have that ready for the next episode where I will show you some of the resume mistakes to avoid and then after that go on to show you how to write a strong targeted resume for healthcare, marketing, and financial executives. The cheat sheet and the training again can be found at resumecheatsheet.com where we have examples and ideas for other industries as well. And remember for the next few episodes for the Pretend You're Fire Today podcast, we're going to go through a list of tactics and activities that you can do now as if you were let go today to ensure that you're always ready for whatever the world brings your way. My friend saved me with her priceless advice of Pretend You're Fire Today, as I discussed in the first episode, and I am paying it forward with you. I ask you to pay this sentiment forward and share it with as many executives and rising professionals who you feel would benefit from this build it before you need it advice. And to get a jump on the first item on the Pretend Your Fire Today activity list, which is get your resume ready, go to resumecheatsheet.com and download the freebie there, how to write your resume easily. And we're going to tackle the next steps on what a resume needs to look like and resume mistakes to avoid when designing and writing your resume for the roles that are going to bring you to the next step in your career. Thanks for joining me today, and I look forward to your progress and look forward to having you join me next week. Be well. This is the podcastfactory.com.